Hey guys, Chris here with another video for you. In the first part of the video, we're taking some measurements on these aluminum sheets. These sheets are an eighth of an inch thick, and they'll end up being the side plates for the pedals. And you'll get a better idea what they look like in a future video. We took the sheets over to the bandsaw, and I noticed that the faster I fed the work, the better it would cut. So that's something I learned during this part of the build. In a minute or so, you'll see the milling process on the side plates after they've been, they've been measured and cut. I wanted to show you this milling process for two reasons. Uh, number one, it's part of the build process. And two, uh, we learned a couple of things while doing this, so I figured I would share the experience with all of you. Even though we were taking really shallow passes, uh, probably about five thousandths or less per pass, uh, we were still getting a rough cut. With conventional milling machines, that is, milling machines that are not CNC, you should try to feed the work in the opposite direction that the end mill is spinning. Uh, for example, you think about a car driving down the road and the tires are rotating with the ground plane. If you feed your work like this with a conventional milling machine, you might get some chatter, which can cause a not-so-smooth finish. Now, that all depends on RPMs and feed rates, and it also might depend on what type of uh, end mill you're using. But generally, I believe it's, it's better to run the end mill in the opposite direction that you're feeding the work. Uh, think about a car moving forward, but the tires are going in reverse. That might help you to visualize what I'm talking about. I know there's a term for this type of milling, but I can't think of the term at the moment. Maybe somebody can comment uh, with the correct term. Something else we learned while doing this was the fact that our method of centering the work doesn't work all that well, and during final production, we're going to have to figure out another way to do it, because the way that you see us doing it here, it, it was not only most likely incorrect, uh, it also took a while to do. And when you need to put out a lot of pieces of, of work in a given time frame, uh, you need to make smart use of that time. More than likely, we'll be using a, uh, a vise next time. The vise we purchased is really cool because it allows us to take off the jaws and reposition them to accommodate larger pieces of work. Uh, this will allow us to make much more precise measurements while keeping the work firmly on the table. I wouldn't say that how we did it here was necessarily bad, but there's a much better way to do it, and you'll get to see that later. Even though we had a bit of a rough time with these sheets, I think this is a good thing, and I'll explain why. This is a learning process for us, so as the build progresses, we'll probably end up learning a lot, like faster ways to do things, or even better ways to do certain things. This not only helps us, but the speed at which we can produce a part will be directly transferred to the consumer. For example, if it only takes us one day to manufacture the parts for, say, five sets of pedals compared to a few days, uh, you'll end up getting the pedals sooner, which will benefit all of us. And we think it's great that you guys get to witness firsthand this learning process. You not only get to experience it with us, but perhaps others might learn something as well. And that's why we chose to do these videos, and there's a lot more to come. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.